Hey everybody, in this week's episode, we get fiberglass on top of the core of the boat, we fare the underside of the coach house roof, and we clean up the boat because it's a mess. Hey everybody, it's Gil with the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser, and if you're new to our channel, my wife and I upload videos every single week about our lifestyle, living aboard our sailboat. As you can see by the blue tarps, we're in the middle of a major refit. But if that's the type of content you like, do us a favor, go ahead and click on the subscribe button, click on that little bell icon, and you'll be notified of any new content. If you're a regular subscriber, thank you so much. I really appreciate the community, the comments, and everything that people share with one another in the comments down below. So thank you, thank you. Um, but listen, I am thrilled to be back down on the boat. It's been almost two full weeks. We took 10 days in Florida. We explored some marinas. I'll, um, I'll put a little link right up here um, or right up here. I never remember which way to point with the camera. In one of these two places, there'll be a link that'll pop up and um, you can see that video. We kind of checked out the area. Really, really liked the uh, Charlotte Harbor area, like Punta Gorda and Cabbage Key and uh, Boca Grande, um, you know, Port Charlotte. It was really, really nice down there. Actually found a cool place called the Burnt Store Marina. Uh, it's like in a gated housing community with a golf course and a nice bunch of nice amenities and was cheaper than most of the other ones. So that was really nice. So I popped in down here at the boatyard about a week ago and I saw that they had started to put some ferry compound right on the edges of where the core and the existing fiberglass met uh, you can watch the video up here and I'll, I'll show back where I put the core in um, but they started to um, put a fairing compound in there and ultimately going to grind it out and bevel the edge where the existing glass was so they could put new glass down um, that was a week ago uh, I was busy I was out of town etc came back and I was excited to come back today and kind of see what kind of progress has been made uh, the neat thing is they have glassed it over so I'll show you what that looks like in a minute this is the view so when i came in today i'm starting to see some work done here so let me kind of step on in so this is by the uh by the overhead hatch and you can see they have glass on that several layers it looks like of a uh, woven roving and then like a 1709 or bi here you go you can kind of see what this looks like and you can see where they they ground it all the way from you know here where i had cut it up to there to get a beveled edge so that the glass will seat in there real nice to get a nice smooth uh smooth transition um it'll all be ground in sand and fared and it'll blend itself into the existing portion of the deck so i'm liking what i'm seeing here you might see the slight discoloration right here and that's just where i had um i had put a fairing compound down and then they sanded that a little bit smooth where it wasn't a 100 percent smooth in the transition and we've got this section over here. So this is the big patch uh, forward of the hatch. It's underneath the mizzen step. Uh, you can see the horizontal lines right here. If you notice those right there, those horizontal lines are where I had cut small um, grooves in the core so that it would actually bend. There's a slight arch, right, as you can imagine, to this roof, and that allows it to bend there. Um, and then over here along the edge of the companionway, go all the way up to the edge of that. Need to have them glass right up to the edge. Looks like they didn't, so I'll have to come back and do that part of it. And then over here, we've got uh, all the way back down along that side. So I'm excited. This is looking really good. And you got a little bit of a little bit of a better view of it, um, you know, from this section all the way back here by the hatch and companionway, and on the roof. Things look rather um, the same down below. Um, <laughs> you can definitely tell they've been doing a little bit of sanding and grinding. Um, even with the boat fairly closed up with the exception of just a little, the little cracks, you know, between the doors and the louvers, you know, still look at the steps, they're covered. So I'm gonna vacuum real quick in here just to try and keep it from getting too bad because they're gonna end up doing a lot more fairing and sanding up there. So if I come in every day and just kind of clean up the little bit that's here, well, I'm pleased with the progress I'm seeing down below, it's good. I did um, also want to start to take some of the tape off the roof here where we taped on the bottom side of it when I put the core down because I filled it with a thickened epoxy to, to uh, bond the pieces of core together and I didn't want any dripping down below. So in some cases it's uh, it's a little uneven right there, in some cases there's still a bit of a gap. So I'm going to get some um, fairing thickened, uh, thickened epoxy, a fairing compound, and I'm going to uh, sort of blend it into all of those openings and then get that sanded smooth so that the ceiling will be ready to paint whenever we're ready down below. I think it's uh, now's probably as good a time as any to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and show the uh, the joints up in the ceiling I was just referencing. Uh, you know, you can kind of see here where the old core and the new core is. Um, and what I have, let's see if we can get this. Let's see that. Yeah, you can see the thickened epoxy is in there. In some cases, it's not really smooth. There's a little little bit of a divot there between the two. So I'll fare that nice and smooth, and uh, we should be set. Yeah. 
kind of nice you see the the new core in that spot it's a little harder to see here and I'm trying to do this without uh, falling through the giant openings in the floor but there's new core right here next to the port and then along behind the port and then the other big spot for new core is right along the side of the companionway right in here uh, and I also have the new core in the bulkhead and I still need to actually adhere all that in on the bottom side all the way down to the edge of the door frame. I think today is going to be a bit of a cleanup day um, because they're still working on the fiberglass. I don't want to do a whole lot up here, but uh, you know, I'm just kind of getting things cleaned up. I still have some tape and masking around the ports. I can probably get that cleaned up. Uh, see if I can make this thing start to look like a boat again. Uh, I got to try and get some of this stuff cleared off the deck. And then I think I'm going to start removing the blue painter's tape from these dusty windows. But let me get the deck cleaned up. Alright, well, I must admit, it looks better. It's not super clean, but it looks better for sure. I'm going to start removing some tape. So I'm just going to start working on removing some of the tape here, cleaning it up. Um, I feel like there's a bunch of little tiny things i got to get done that I just haven't in a while. So this is a good place to start, or as good as any other. One down, five to go. feels like victory when it all comes off in one shot. <laughs> Don't want to lose all these deck keys for the new deck fills. So put them in my pocket for now, which means I'll probably find them in the laundry later this week. All right, so I got a little bit of that cleaned up. It felt good to get the tape off of there and a couple other things, just sweeping the deck. It's amazing that it just starts to feel a little bit more like the boat, which is frankly good because you know it was looking a little rough there. I showed this last week. It's moved to a different spot, but clearly my fuel system is uh, labeled and getting ready to, uh, either they already ordered this stuff or they're about to, I'm not sure which. So, uh, feels like so long ago, you can still see my mast up there wrapped in plastic. That's my new mast. And I don't know if you can see this, there's the, there's the end of my old one and it extends all the way up there on this rack underneath this boat. Um, at some point I am likely going to cut this thing apart. I'm going to wait until the new mast is up and then I'll probably come um, back here and I think I'm going to cut this in about six foot sections with a chainsaw. I'm curious if it's solid or if it's boxed. So I've got big plans for that. I, I think I'm going to take um, that mast and I'm going to use it to uh, form the edge of the deck boxes I'm going to build. I thought it'd be really cool to have white deck boxes with a nice teak or hardwood decorative trim along the outside. And not just decorative trim, if it's solid, I'll be able to route this up and make it part of the actual frame. It's kind of a neat uh, homage to the boat, if you will. Uh, and it should look really nice as well. Instead of mixing up micro balloons and epoxy, I think I'm going to run over to the West Marine real quick. And I'm just going to grab a small container of the pre-mixed fairing compound. I want this stuff to be real easy to sand. And since it's going on the inside of the, um, of the roof, inside of the galley, the coach house, uh, I think it's going to be uh, a dry and uh, an area that's not going to be um, maybe as harsh as fairing compound outside the boat. Uh, so I want to get something that sands really easy just because it's going to be overhead the whole time. And, well, I'm getting weaker in my old age, apparently. Off to West Marine. Uh, the nice thing is there's one convenient. It's only about five or six miles from here, maybe eight, pretty close. And I'm gonna go get that fairing compound. I'll be back. So I love it when you run across really, really knowledgeable people. I ran into West Marine and um, I was just looking for a pre-made, um, you know, sort of fairing filler. Um, and there's a young girl that works in here. I, she's probably in her 20s. She seems to be the most knowledgeable one in the store. Uh, you know, a couple people came over and, and said they weren't really sure. She came over and said, what are you working on? I told her what I was doing and said I was just trying to be you know, a little bit lazy, didn't want to have to mix up my epoxy. 
And uh, her comment was, listen, if you already have the epoxy, just get the 407 filler. Um, and she made the recommendation saying you can use 407 or 410 for fairing. If you want something with some more adhesion properties, uh, bonding properties, use the 407 as opposed to the 410. Both sand really easy. So I love the fact that they're really knowledgeable. So Tori, thank you from West Marine. I'm back from West Marine. I got that 407 that I was just mentioning and uh, tools of the trade. So I'm about to go ahead and mix up a little bit of this fairing compound. I'm gonna mix up a small amount. Uh, and I'll show you what I've done here for spreading it. <clears throat> I bought a small package of these little um, plastic spreaders. I, I bought the West Systems one just because they happen to be there. But I cut them into little sections like this so they're small enough to get into the edges I need to. And it's got this nice little rounded edge on one corner of it will let me get along the, um, along the edge where the, the beams and the rooftop come together. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and open up my package so once I get mixing, I can concentrate right on it. And what I'm gonna use is a small board and this is gonna be my mixing board which will let me uh, sort of scrape some of this up and, and uh, adhere it to the, uh, the rooftop. So away we go. Uh, we start mixing some of this up. I'm only doing uh, two pumps of resin and two pumps of hardener because I want to do a very small amount at a time here. I've not worked with 407 um, filler, the fairing filler, so I want to kind of see how well it works. And my guess is uh, I'm probably gonna have to add a lot of filler into this. Um, you know, you see how much is in the cup. I'm guessing the filler is gonna probably go up to about this line just to get it to a peanut butter consistency, which is what I want to spread it along the ceiling. Now, Wes recommends a full two minutes of stirring. A little trick for any of you that happen to film yourself doing work from time to time. The nice thing is, if you take a look at the camera when you pump this in and you see the, uh, the counter, you know exactly how long it was you were mixing. This is a very, very, fine material. So you want to be really cautious you don't breathe it in. I'm holding it away from myself a little bit and I'm stirring slowly to get the powder mixed in. Right now it's still, I mean, you can see that, it's still a lot of powder. Got it all wet. Now we'll add another scoop here. And I just do this with a uh, popsicle stick, see if you can see that. That's kind of the way I put it in. I don't want to, I don't want to add too much. Um, and it gets real hard to mix it in if you add a lot of it right up front. I don't know if you can see this. It's starting to get a little thicker. You can see that consistency. Just still a little too thin. I'm going to add just a little bit more. But because I'm working on the ceiling, I definitely want to. Um, I want this to be thick enough that it's not going to drip or droop off of the ceiling. It's really important for me. So I'm going to mix it a little thicker than I probably would for most other applications. I'm going to go ahead and turn this out onto my little board right here. We turn it on the board for two reasons. One, it's going to be easier to pick up with the, the small spreader. The other reason is um, when the epoxy is all held together in the same spot, it starts to generate heat and causes it to kick even sooner. So this will help extend a little bit my working time. Let me show you what I have here. So I've got my mud and I've got my scraper. That gives me exactly what it is I need. So what I'm going to do here is carry this all down below and we'll get you showing how we do it all. For the record, that wasn't easy to get down with both hands full. Let's uh, see what we can get here. I'm going to start with this section right here. And the reason I'm starting with this one furthest away is because this is kind of up over the top of seating, it's going to be the least visible. So when I'm starting, uh, if I'm going to make any mistakes, this is the spot I would rather do it. So. Um, I'm just basically taking my, my material here, I'm troweling a little bit up onto my spreader, and then I'm going to uh, just spread it up into the, the opening here. And I'm putting it on fairly liberally with the assumption that um, when I sand it off, I will certainly sand it and get it nice and smooth. So I'm putting it out a little bit thick and working at, um, working at how I'm gonna fare it smooth. I'm starting by applying quite a bit of pressure. I want to get push it up into any cracks that are there. Um, and then I'll come back and, and smooth it over in a minute. I definitely want to fill any of those openings. That's the reason why I chose the 407 rather than the 410, because it also has a little bit of a, an adhesion or bonding property as opposed to just fairing. I'll tell you, the small radius on one end of this is working perfect for creating the, uh, the smooth edge between the beam and the actual roof. Looks very nice. A 
All right, so I um, ended up making two batches of um, farine compound. Uh, again, it was just 105 resin with um, 205 hardener, and then I went ahead and used the 407 fairing filler. There's a 407 and a 410, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, the 407 had that additional bonding property. I really wanted that because it was where the two seams go together, so if I'm going to put something between them, I may as well do something that uh, has the potential to also help adhere it. Um, so I went ahead and did the sections in this back corner. I did the ones right over here by the companionway, and then right actually above my head, uh, I also did the one that's around the hatch. So I'm gonna let that dry and um, probably tomorrow I'll come back in here and I will uh, take a sander to it and kind of see how well it fares and if I need to do some additional. But this is a good, uh, good place to start. First time I've done this type of fairing with, uh, with a fairing compound, especially using that 407. And now I see the difference. I was using micro balloons, very, very different. Micro balloons were harder to sand and not quite as smooth. This was like talcum powder. It was so fine, uh, the filler, uh, I think. This will probably sand a lot easier. We shall see. I'll tell you one thing that's important is security. I don't often show it in my videos, but one of the things we need to make sure we do is certainly lock things up. Um, you know, like anything, thieves will find a way to get into something, but if you make it inconvenient, you're less likely to have to deal with it. <laughs> so, got it locked up. Well, I'm going to call it a day. We've got plans tonight. We've got to go back to the campground and do our camp host duties, clean up some trash around the campsite, and we're going to the Cutting Edge Theater tonight to see a tribute to Queen. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Hey, everybody. We're picking up trash in the little gator at the campground. So part of our little camp hosting duty is pick up trash on the there you go, picker. Yep. Or like our training showed us, that's a PPE, a personal protection <laughs> equipment. Anyway cruising down this little hiking path. It's really kind of cool. And that is a ginormous tree. It's hard to get a scope on that, but if I stood next to it, that's higher than my waist. We headed over to the Cutting Edge Community Theater in Slidell to see We Will Rock You, a tribute to the Queen Band. Hope you enjoyed this week's video. Next week we're going to check on the fairing on the ceiling of the boat and hopefully we'll rebed the forward companionway. If you enjoyed this video, what should they do, McKinley? Like and subscribe. That's right, like and subscribe. And we have a couple of videos up here we think you'll enjoy. Yay, are we done?